The winter time can really take its toll on your dog's feet. The frozen ground, the ice, some of the, even the de-icing methods that uh, people are using can really um, affect the pads of your dog's feet. In this video today, I'm going to show you the best all-natural way to protect your dog's feet in the cold winter climate. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help our viewers spend some quality time with their four-legged family members. Now let's jump right into this because I'm really excited to share this with you guys and like I said it is super simple. So I went to our local uh, nature food store or uh, you know, organic food store and I grabbed these four ingredients and they are beeswax, sunflower oil, some coconut oil, and some shea butter. Now uh, they're pretty easy to get and I encourage you to you know go to your local uh, organic food grocer and pick them up there but I'm also going to post a link uh, there'll be affiliate links in the description below uh, so that if you, you know, don't have an opportunity to get out to a store or you don't really feel like traveling out to, to gather all these things they'll be available to you so check out the description below. Now another thing that I'm going to suggest is an electronic scale and if you're feeding raw you probably have one of these for measuring out the, the amount of your dog's food for each meal but it's going to make things a little bit easier and um, I'm going to be talking uh, you know in, in imperial measurement and metric measurement uh, a little bit and it's a little easier to do the conversion if we're dealing straight with weight but you don't need one it's not necessary for this recipe. First things first I'm going to measure out my sunflower oil now if you were doing um, like a spoon measurement it's four tablespoons of sunflower oil that's needed for this now if you're using uh, uh, an electric scale it's uh, a tablespoon is about 15 grams so it's going to be 60 grams of sunflower oil that we need so I'll just add that to my scale and remember it's four tablespoons so it should be it's so easy to do the liquid measurements on the scale it's so much harder when I get to the beeswax you'll, you'll see in a minute now next up is four tablespoons of our coconut oil um, now I'm actually going to use a tablespoon to measure out the four tablespoons so hopefully it'll be uh, pretty accurate it's uh, it's an interesting texture and if you're not familiar with coconut oil it's actually pretty hard um, when it's cold or at least not heated we're going to add those four tablespoons. And there we go, we've got 60 grams in there. And uh, the, the great part about co coconut oil, is one of the things that we can uh, eat along. It smells amazing when you're uh, preparing things with it. And uh, it's uh, edible. I mean, most of our dog food is edible, but I generally wouldn't eat it. Coconut oil, I will, it's really good. Our next ingredient is shea butter, and uh, we're only gonna have two tablespoons of the shea butter in our uh, paw protector. Um, I really like using these all natural ingredients. Uh, we know that the dogs are likely, um, you know, at some point going to lick their paws, and I wanna know that uh, everything I put on my dogs, whether it's a shampoo or, uh, you know, in this case, it's a paw protector, but I wanna know that it's safe for dogs, and uh, these, these are all great examples of things that are. Now last but certainly not least is our beeswax. Now we're going to be using eight teaspoons of beeswax and uh, for you guys that are using a scale at home, a teaspoon is about five grams. So we're gonna need 40 grams of beeswax and we're gonna add that. It, it, it actually flakes off really nicely. Uh, it does make it a little bit longer uh, of a process to get the beeswax into your uh, mixer. However, if uh, you use a sharp knife and just sort of flake it off a little bit at a time, uh, you can get through the process pretty quickly. The great part is beeswax smells amazing, makes the entire kitchen smell amazing. So, uh, you know, that's sort of the benefit of having to work through the eight teaspoons of beeswax. Has anybody ever told you to mind your beeswax? This is what I imagine they're talking about. Now we're going to put all of those ingredients into a pot and that pot is going to go on the stove at a low temperature. We're going to be stirring it pretty frequently and once all of the ingredients have mixed together really well, we're going to take it off the stove and I'll show you what we'll do next. Now our paw balm is pretty well mixed at this point so uh, I want to take it off of the stove and, but before it cools, we're going to let it cool at room temperature but before it does that, I want to put it into some sort of something, some vessel that I can, um, you know, easily use it with the dogs. Now, a lot of people will actually take this and then put it into um, almost like lip balm containers and then dispense it from there and, and put it on their dog's paws. But uh, a hack that I like is get some sort of container that's a little bit wider than your dog's paws. I'm going to put 
the uh, mix the the uh, paw balm into this, and then when our dogs require it, I can literally take their little paws, dab it in the paw balm, and then massage it in. That way, I get lots on there. I'm gonna. Uh, I, I actually enjoy making this stuff, so I don't mind making it. Uh, you're gonna use a little bit more if you do it this way. Um, so maybe for those of you who are, you know don't have the time to, to spend on this kind of thing, maybe using the lip balm containers is, is a good solution for you. But for me, I want to make sure I thoroughly cover the dog's paws so that uh, you know that the, that their paws stay intact and don't get cracked very often. So I am ever so carefully going to pour this into this little container. Now uh, I mentioned before if um, you, uh, I think I got this uh, you know, at a dollar store or something like that, but I can also provide a link in the description if you want to do your entire uh, paw bomb purchase uh, through Amazon or something like that, I can post an affiliate link there. We've got to let this hang out uh, on the counter until it's hard and then I can show you guys how to put it on. Now a couple hours have passed and our uh, paw balm has uh, become a lot harder. It's still a little bit oily, but it's great because it's gonna the, the oiliness will help me massage it into his feet. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind, this isn't a protective barrier. If it's extremely cold or uh, you know the surface is really um, jagged or extremely salty, uh, you're still gonna want to have a barrier for your dog's feet. This is essentially going to keep their feet from uh, drying up and cracking and that can be a real issue, especially with some of these uh, sports dogs. Um, th this will allow them to you know run around and play outside. Hi buddy. Run around and play outside uh, and uh, prevent their feet from drying up and cracking. And you can see Rad's pretty playful. So whether it's uh, summertime or wintertime, he's always ready to play. But I'm gonna show you really quickly why I choose the wider container. You can see how wide that is. And I'll get a little bit closer to the camera here, but. So with this wider container, I can actually take one of Rad's feet and just press it right into the bomb. Yeah, I can rub it. I know, you know, if that's a good boy. I can sort of rub it on into his feet uh, and it stays in this little vessel which is great and then I'll essentially just massage it into the pads of his feet. You know I really want this stuff to uh, penetrate and uh, I want it to, to moisten his feet, feet as best we can. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind is Another great way to keep your dog's feet from getting cold and any damage from their feet is after they come in, after you've been outside in the winter time, check in between their toes for like little ice balls or salt. Another thing you can do is trim the hair in between their toes so that there's nothing for the salt and the ice to get caught up on. That's another uh, really good way to sort of make sure that your dog isn't having any uncomfortable scenarios after they go out for a play in the winter or go for a walk in the winter time. I hope this natural paw bomb tip helps you make the most of the winter time with your dog. If this is the first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help you do something awesome with your dog. Beside me is a video that YouTube thinks you'll want to watch next. On that note, I'm Ken. This is Rad. Happy training.